What's up everybody, it's me E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews and today we're going to review Wonder Woman 1984. Alright, let's jump right into a quick intro. Wonder Woman is faced with making one of the hardest decisions in her life and she's also got two new enemies to deal with in Maxwell Lord and the Cheetah. All right, let's get right into the good. The good. Now, without question, the absolute best thing about Wonder Woman 1984 is Gal Gadot. She absolutely owns this role without question. She seems both comfortable and authentic in her portrayal of the superhero. I do believe she was able to stretch a little bit more than normal this time around, given the gravity of the decisions and situations her character faces. Despite her character being a demigoddess, Gal did a wonderful job of humanizing the Amazonian princess. When you combine Gal's delivery and Patty Jenkins' writing and directing, the character of Diana progresses in a meaningful way that really keeps audiences attached and engaged with her character. Alongside her, Kristen Wiig was pretty solid as Cheetah. I thought that given the plot of the film, she made a nice transition in her performance in becoming a formidable villain. I also thought that Pedro Pascal did a really good job as Maxwell Lord. Both Wig and Pascal benefited from the fact that their characters had just enough material to work with to kind of keep them away from being just a stale, linear, generic villain. Chris Pine gave a really good performance too, although he seemed a little bit more to shine in more of the humorous moments of the movie. His chemistry with Gal definitely picked up right where it left off from the first film. Now one thing this sequel does very well is establish a number of different themes that really play into Diana's character. The early looks that we get of Themyscira served a nice purpose of helping the audience learn along with Diana. This was a great way to help us connect with her character and see how she applies certain life lessons in her journey to becoming a hero. There's also a reoccurring theme about truth and what it can mean for all of us in our daily lives. And I thought the film did a nice attempt at trying to express what that actually means for us on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, another highlight in this movie is going to come from the comic references and a lot of different callbacks. From old to new fans of Wonder Woman, I think that many will appreciate the new elements that director Patty Jenkins introduces for the character. A number of moments serve as a nice surprise and delight for fans as they continue to see Diana's journey. I specifically appreciated the increased usage of the Lasso of Truth. Now in this sequel, we get so much more variety and significance with the weapon compared to the previous film. Okay, enough of that. Let's get right on to the bad. The bad. Well, one thing I didn't really care for too much was the editing in this movie. I kind of thought it was lacking and it did kind of hurt the storytelling. There were some moments where scenes appeared to be missing or things just automatically got pushed forward with characters without any real natural transitions. I mean, kind of think of it like this, like if you're watching a movie at home and let's just say you accidentally sit on the remote and the fast forward button goes and you're like, whoa, wait a minute, how do we get to this new scene? Wait, why is this person automatically evil? When did they make their transition? I mean, despite the fact that this movie is two and a half hours long, I was kind of surprised that of all things, the editing was kind of choppy in some places. Beyond that, Patty Jenkins opted to use more practical effects than CGI special effects. In some scenes, this did end up working out nicely for the sake of the cinematography. In that very same scene, however, there were moments where Wonder Woman and her abilities would come off a little bit too cartoonish. It's too hard to tell, maybe a different special effects team or a different team of stunt choreographers probably could have helped out. It just felt like a bit of a give and take where we'd get a really cool action sequence and then we'd also get a quick moment of something really odd looking at the same time. Finally, even though I did like the themes that were at work here, I thought the execution for some of them were kind of cringeworthy. As mentioned before, it's cool when the themes like love or truth are used to help develop a character. 
However, in this movie, it gets a little corny in terms of how those themes are manifested. I mean, kind of think of it like this. Imagine you're watching a childhood cartoon show and no matter what the odds are, the power of friendship always prevails. So the ending of this movie just kind of felt a little odd and way too convenient the way everything concludes. And I mean, yeah, that might work in a Saturday morning cartoon, but given the nature of these more mature films, I don't think so. Anyway, let's get on to the reason. The reason. Wonder Woman 1984 is exactly what a Superman movie can only hope to be. It depicts a superhero that is challenged, layered, flawed, relatable, and yet still remains a beacon of hope for everyone to aspire to be. I think it's an exceptional sequel, primarily based on it showing us the next step in the evolution of Wonder Woman's character. And I mean, honestly, that's essentially what we want sequels to do, to show us the next stage of the character. And this movie does that. Now, this movie does have a number of flaws, which I think kind of come off as cheesy. Most of those flaws can probably be forgiven, but it's hard to overlook them completely. Thinking back to the first Wonder Woman movie, that film started off really good and fell apart in the final third act with the corny themes, kind of like, you know, the power of love or whatever, and the boo-boo CGI. Now, this sequel doesn't fall apart at the end, but rather it kind of spreads out the blemishes throughout. And for those of you that are curious, um, Wonder Woman 1984 does not necessarily follow in the footsteps of Batman vs. Superman, uh, or Justice League for that matter. You can kind of think of this movie and kind of approach it as if it's not only a standalone, but it's carving its own path within the DCEU. So when it comes to the rating for Wonder Woman 1984, I've got to give it a seven out of 10. Now I would recommend watching Wonder Woman 1984 in theaters if it's safe and theaters are open in your local area, or you can watch it in the comfort of your own home because as it's recently been announced, this movie is going to be coming out both in theaters and on digital on HBO Max. And I believe that's only gonna be for the first month. So you wanna double check on that. Now, since this movie was filmed with the intention of being seen on the big screen, I would recommend that you try to watch it like on the biggest screen possible. You know, like don't try and watch this on your phone or laptop. It, you're just gonna lose out on um, basically the grandeur that it tries to capture. But there is a benefit in watching this on HBO Max and that's the fact that it's gonna lower your expectations and I think that's also gonna help you enjoy and maybe even appreciate the movie just a little bit more. Either way, however you decide to see it, I still say go ahead and check it out. So do you plan on watching Wonder Woman 1984? Are you gonna watch it in theaters or do you plan on watching it on HBO Max? If and when you do go see it, please come on back to this video and let me know what you thought about it so we can talk about it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I always appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. In the meantime, I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.